What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. So today's a, a different video uh, than I normally do. Normally I have like a special topic in mind uh, to chat about on Tuesdays or you know Fridays I have tobacco reviews but for today I'm simply going to cover um, a bit of background on how I got into pipe smoking myself and while I'm doing that I figured hey I, I have a couple of pipes I need to, to clean um, some I smoked yesterday, got my Celtic Rat Rays here, and uh, one of my Peterson Donegals right here. I figured I would uh, I'll go ahead and clean up while I do so, and, and so you kind of see what how I clean pipes, and while I do so, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll share a little bit of background on how I got into pipe smoking myself. Um, I am smoking currently today. Uh, today's Tuesday. It's usually it's when I do a lot of my studies and work for the week. Um, smoking out of my Salvinelli Eleganza prints. Uh, smoking a good bit of. Well, today I'm smoking Wind Windjammer by GOP's. One of his recent blends that have come out, uh, and I did a review on. I've been smoking a good bit of it yet, uh, recently, just to, I guess, kind of get rid of it in a way. But not. I, I really enjoy it. Um, I've uh, I've been more into Virginia Burley blends as of late, and uh, and this is one I've really just I pulled out more than uh, more more than usual. So, um, by the way, I might mess up my routine while I'm talking because I'm going to get distracted. So bear that in mind. It may not be a perfect perfect routine of of cleaning a pipe. So I didn't grow up with with uh, anyone smoking a pipe like growing up I know some of you guys have had uncles and grandpas or maybe dads do so um, I I did not um, no one did I, I know my grandpa did at one point but I wasn't around when he did uh, so I think he stopped uh, at some point in his life but uh, fairly young I'd say in the early teens um, I really got into reading books a good bit more, and uh, actually before I do that, I need to clean out the bowl. I already messed up on my routine. But I got into reading Lord of the Rings. Now, I've mentioned that before. And I got into reading the, uh, I think I just started with The Fellowship of the Ring. Actually, you know what, I think I started with The Similarian. Um, if you've ever read that, you know, I, I, I didn't get anything out of it at the time. It was beyond me. I didn't know what I was reading. I was kind of getting into fantasy at that time, and, and that's how I got into Lord of the Rings. Um, but it was beyond me. But then I went to Fellowship of the Rings. And uh, so, of course, as, as you probably know, for those of you who've watched the movies or read the books, you know, the... It, Tolkien has written a lot of pipe smoking into the the, the world, and that kind of stuck with me. You know, at that time I had an, any interest in it, I guess, but it stuck with me. So it wouldn't be till quite later on in my later twenties, and you know, I had the movies in my mind. Um, that's when I was getting more into ministry. Uh, more into studying theology, and um, I had some professors who smoked pipes, and then some of the folks I read, you know, books I've read, they smoke cigars or pipes, and so, um, you know, kind of in my earlier years, I was smoking cigars occasionally. I didn't really get into cigars that much, like I, I, I'm by no means an, an expert. Um, I was smoking entry level, entry level cigars, you know, nothing, nothing spectacular. Um, but then I started getting more into pipes or interest into pipes, you know, knowing folks, reading folks who, who did smoke pipes and seeing them and, um, uh, you know, like C.S. Lewis, maybe you've, you've heard of Chronicles of Narnia. He's, he's the author of, of, of Chronicles of Narnia, C.S. Lewis. He was a professor and he just mentioned how he really enjoyed pipe smoking and what, what it the the influence it was for him both on in his faith especially so that that was kind of that, that began to pique my interest into into pipe smoking um 
more so. Um, and then finally, you know, I've been taught, I was talking to my wife about all this. She kind of knew I had interest, knew I was wanting to get into it. I had set up a home office, not here, um, in the house when I was, when we were living on the farm, I was farming at the time while partially working in ministry. And she, for my birthday, she bought me a pipe kit. Now this was not a, I should have brought it out to show you. Uh, this was a, like a, a pipe starter kit. It came with a pipe. It came with, you know, some pipe cleaners. Uh, it came with a, a, a bowl reamer. It came with some other things along with it. And it was Joel Delph, I believe is the brand. And I think it's made in China. It's not good quality, but that was what I started with. And sure enough, it was my wife. So I, I don't know if many people, many of you have gotten into pipe smoking by your wife. I mean, that's something different, right? But it was, it was my wife who, who got me into it really, or, or began me on the journey. And, uh, so I bought that. I didn't have any pipes, pipe tobacco with me. So I went to, um, I went to a local grocery store, you know, and they have their, you know, tobacco section that's sealed off with glass. And I didn't know what to buy at that time. So I bought this stuff called maybe Techstar. That doesn't sound right. But it was like a, it was, it, I think looking back, it may have just been a basic Virginia leaf, no additive whatsoever. And it was horrible. I bought, it was like a pouch and I bought that and it was plum horrible. Um, I sh looking back, I should have bought some Carter. Uh, they had some Carter there, Carter Hall. I should have bought that, but I didn't. Um, I was looking for something even cheaper and this was the cheap of the cheap and it was just looking, it was, it was smoking, it was smoking cigarettes at best. Um, I, I, I smoked cigarettes a bit, you know, in high school when I was, I guess more in my rebellious stage, you know, and it just reminded me of that. I thought I was going to be done. I tried to spray it with a, um, I mixed some sugar water and, uh, I'd sprayed the, what I had remaining with it. And I tried to make it taste a little better and it did nothing. Um, so, so that was the very entry into it. And then I started looking more online and, and all that and, uh, trying to get some advice or where to, what to buy. And so then I finally picked up some greater value. It's a greater value, uh, blends, uh, forgot the brand, the, the, brand off the moment, but, um, some, some of that brand and then some Sutliff blends and they were like apple. Um, I think I got a bourbon whiskey or no, uh, it was maple whiskey, I believe by Sutliff. And, and those were the kind of the blends I started off with. So I was doing that. I was looking at some of the early YTPC videos. Uh, this may have been before mutton chop, um, who later on would have been a more influential um, in my path but so I I looked up how to smoke and and what to smoke and practice on it and that pipe I had at Joel Delph boy that uh I used that thing I didn't I didn't have multiple pipes I didn't have a corn cob I had that one and at that time I was smoking multiple times a day hardly cleaning the thing um, I ran it through the ringer still holds up to this day it's it's quite a small pipe with a small bowl but um it's probably why i smoked so many bowls of it but um i tell you that that led into me reading on quite a bit more so uh that was that was how i got into into pipe smoking and uh, so I, i've mentioned before for for a while i i stayed with those blends you know just some basic kind of like aromatic blends cheap on cheaper blends and then I picked up my first English blend and that was Dunhill London mixture all right so uh, I didn't know anything about Dunhill I didn't know that was a you know I, I, I looked up and I knew that Dunhill was a, a trusted brand kind of famous didn't know quality didn't know you know that's the that's the way to go or anything like that. Um, and so I bought some London mixture and I opened that tin of it and I, 
I smelt it. I'm like, what is this? You know, that was it was new to me. I never had a Latakia blend. And I I smoked one bowl of it. And I didn't even probably I don't know if I got through your first bowl of London mixture. And I emptied out the bowl. I'm pretty sure I emptied out the bowl at that time. Um, I thought it went bad. <laughs> I had like, this is not right. It's not what I've tasted before. Um, this, this, the, the, such a smokiness. And if you ever had London Mixture, you know, it's just your, it's, it's a, it, it's quite a smoky blend. It's a heavy, you know, it's, it's a lack. It ha doesn't have much sweetness. And uh, so I almost threw it out, almost just threw the tin away. This went bad. And I didn't know what bad meant for tobacco, what, you know, how, how something could go bad with tobacco leaf. But I thought it went bad and I almost threw it away. But I was like, no, surely it's not bad. It was sealed. So I kept smoking it and smoking it. And, and, and that's when I grew to really, really love it. Um, that's when I really got into English blends, non-aromatic blends. So I bought some, I was usually buying from Pipes and Cigars because they were cheaper and th than most other places. I did not have a tobacconist nearby for a while, or it was about an hour away. Um, so around that time, I, when I was about to buy some more blends, I went to a tobacconist. It was a cigar store in, in San Antonio, Texas, and bought some corn cobs. Finally, um, I bought some tobacco. It might have been Lane Limited, 1Q. I think it was there, but they had it under their, they had it under their, uh, a different name. If you may have run across that, uh, some tobacconists will take a blend and they'll put their name on it, and that's what they did. But it was Lane Limited 1Q, and so I started smoking that, and then I bought. Sut or uh, Scotty's University professor, I did a review on that. That was one of the that was the second English to blend I tried, and so those were those are the first English blends I got into. Um, and I smoked those for a while. I didn't smoke much of that London mixture anymore because right around then Dunhill dropped off for a while and then they came back, and I, I didn't find many of their of London mixture for a while. It just wouldn't didn't stay around long. It was a popular popular enough blend um so this is around the time before london or dunhill uh they went off for a while you know dropped out of production or i'm not even sure what exactly happened but then they came back and then they finally stopped producing altogether so i focused on that english mixture and then i started smoking some other ones i don't even remember i got into cornell and deal uh stovepipe was one of the first Non-aromatic and non-English blends I tried. Stovepipe. I haven't tried it since then. I need to go back to it. I don't have any more of that. Um, so yeah, I started smoking then and and, and just continued on uh, pretty non-stop. Um, I'm not sure how well I claim to be honest with you while I'm talking. It's just not really... I'm, I'm not good at multitasking here. But I think I did a decent job. So that's, that's how I got into it. Uh, that's how I got started. It was by my wife. Not many people can say that. Um, I never had great issues with my wife wife's approval. The one time we did was we had, um, when we had our, our, one of our, my sons, he was born. His nursery was in the in our master bedroom, and then off my master bedroom was the office. So my office was the back of the house, and it had a back door to it to the back of our place. But the the pipe smoke would kind of seep through the door. I didn't, you know, I, I maybe I've opened I opened windows, but it still kind of seeped through. That was when there was kind of a problem. She didn't want that to happen, which I didn't either. So. Uh, that's when I got into getting a, an air filter, um, opening windows, putting on ceiling fans. Actually, before I got an air filter, I did that, and and that helped. I kind of put a towel underneath the door so it couldn't get through, and that really helped overall. That was actually before an air filter, which you're, you're seeing right here. Um, that was before that, and that actually helped itself. 
but that was the only problem she really had. Um, then, you know, later on, we when we moved, got here into this office, and I bought the air filter, did some other things like candles that, that really helped. One of the candles I'm currently currently using is Bearded Tree by Mythologie. Um, they're a candle maker that makes kind of like a fantasy, I guess, candles. It smells really good. It's supposed to be like a tree beard off Lord of the Rings. It has a nice smell. Anyway, so that's how I got into it. I didn't have problems with my wife or really my family. They thought it was weird, but no one really said anything horribly negative. Um, I guess my mom at one point thought, hey, do you think that's healthy? It's like, well, there could be a lot worse things I'm doing. So, um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's the background on what I smoked, how I got started and, uh, and why I got started. Um, like I said, those influences that piqued my interest from professors, Lord of the Rings, theologians in the past, Charles Spurgeon, things like that. So. There you are. Well, I'm going to stop on this one, and I'll continue the other one another time. So, guys, that's all I have. A uh, little bit different of a video. Went longer than usual, but hopefully you enjoy that. You got something out of that. Um, I probably didn't clean that pipe as well as I usually do because, I'm, again, my, my focus is elsewhere. But hope you guys have a good week. Uh, Friday should have a tobacco review coming out, and uh, look forward to getting into that one. So um, you guys have a great week. If you have any questions, comments, Email me or leave them in the comments below, Facebook page, all that good stuff. Uh, subscribe if you don't mind. I'd be grateful. I'd appreciate that. So y'all take care. We'll talk to you soon.